The following morning after Trump won the election, I live in a liberal side of town. I decided to borrow a tuba from my neighbor and walk the streets of my neighborhood playing sad songs on the tuba. As I'm walking around the block, you know, the thing starts to get pretty heavy after a while. Even though it's the kind that's for marching, I started breaking a sweat. I heard some people crying. Somebody else told me to shut the hell up. But I didn't quit. I felt that I had to provide some soundboard for people's feelings, for their misery. In this episode, I talk a little bit about the elections and how they turned out. Needless to say that it's surprising to a lot of us. I'll keep these episodes coming. And if you're inclined and able to donate to my podcast, you can do so at atlanticradio.blogspot.com. Once again, your donations are very much appreciated. I'm not running for president. They take donations too. But I'm doing this, as well as raising my kids and playing music. The Umbrella Corporation. Our business is life itself. This podcast episode is brought to you by nothing. Try it for free. Some of you may remember my conspiracy theory about the elections being rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. Well, I'd like to say that uh, I wasn't wrong. The elections certainly were rigged. The lady Wasserman Schultz criminally defaced the DNC in favor of Hillary Clinton. As to the details about that, I don't feel qualified to elaborate. And there were several other shenanigans that Clinton and her campaign perpetrated. I think a total of seven people got fired due to directly being in collusion with corrupt acts with Hillary Clinton. There's a lot to study about this election. And I think that Donald Trump being elected president shouldn't completely eclipse what happened with Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and the Democratic Party. As I mentioned, and as you know, Donald Trump is going to be the president. Let me tell you something that happened to my wife today. Uh, Two days, it's been a day or two since uh, he's the president-elect. And uh, as I might have mentioned, maybe I didn't mention, that there's uh, all these events that have happened around the country. Uh, Racist phenomena, let's say. Graffiti and whatnot. But concerning my wife, uh, I have a friend who is a very respectable person. I won't give away too much about the person, but he's a black male. He's a grown man. And uh, he started an organization in which we play for people in hospital beds. And we've been doing this. He's been doing this for, I don't know, like 15, maybe 20 years. I don't know. I've been doing this for like maybe 15 years, something like that. And she, my wife went to go have a meeting with him because he needed someone to do the scheduling of the musicians. Uh, The person that he's working with is not working out. The person who's doing that right now is not working out. And so he thought that perhaps my wife may be a good fit for this, uh, for this job. So they had a meeting today in the so-called progressive side of town. Uh, I mean, it is pretty progressive, I guess. Uh, I don't even know anymore. But um, they were sitting at a coffee shop and they were wrapping up their meeting and my wife went to her car to grab one of her business cards. And as she was coming back, she said a about 50-ish, maybe 60, year old tall white male who had been sitting at the same cafe that they were meeting at said to her you're pathetic as to why he would say that to her 
I don't know, but I could deduce and she could deduce as she explained to me that this man said this to her because she had been sitting with a dark skinned black man who happens to be the friend that I'm talking about. If, in case this has something to do with Trump being elected president, which let's face it, it most likely does. Uh, I don't know how that provides an air for people to do things like this all of a sudden. Like how does Trump being the president elect have anything to do with people's allowance to lash out about racial things? I don't, I don't even understand how to compute that. It's retarded basically. Let's hope that these kinds of things go away with a quickness. I can tell you how difficult it is sometimes to uh, do a podcast about current events when you don't have the internet at home. I know some people think I'm an idiot for not having the internet at home, that it's kind of ridiculous. And in truth, really, it is. But it's it has such great benefits to it also that I won't get into right now. Primarily, that you're disconnected from current events, ironically. In any case, Donald Trump is going to be the president of the United States. I don't know how surprised I am since he was one of the two people at the bottom of the race. So it was either Hillary or Trump. I was positive that Hillary was going to win. So I was quite surprised that in spite of the racist rhetoric, the xenophobic verbiage that Trump expressed and the fact that his whole campaign had that type of an aura to it. I'm surprised that he won to a degree and I'm not sad about it uh, because I wasn't crazy about Hillary Clinton either. But there is something that makes me sad about Trump being elected president and it's primarily because of the voters because that means that there's that many voters in America that don't mind hearing uh, slanderous things towards Mexicans or Mexican Americans. And let's not forget that a huge part of the United States used to be Mexico not too long ago. So for a lot of people, it's not like, the, like they crossed the border. It's more like the border moved on them, especially in the Southwestern United States. I read an article from the Atlantic today. It was entitled something like the first day of Trump as president elect or day number one. And the article had a list of things that have been happening around the country, some in Pennsylvania and uh, I think uh, Virginia, I think Michigan was one of them and a few other states. But apparently somebody painted a swastika somewhere and along with it, there was the text, they spray painted the text also that said, make America white again. And in another place, somebody wrote, that's right, black bitches. I don't know for how many people this type of thing speaks for, but I'll tell you what, out of the list of like finalist candidates, Jill Stein, Gary Johnson, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump, if I asked you which of these candidates attracts the most xenophobic vote, I'm pretty confident that you and I would agree on who that candidate is. I didn't tell you which one it was, but if I just came out of the blue with that question, I'm pretty sure we would both say who it was. I won't say who it is now even, because I don't want to add that kind of fuel to that fire. I don't have time to take that issue on in my life. Me doing it that way also is kind of like uh, the dog whistle politic way of doing it. I didn't say who it was. It's just kind of implied. So I didn't vote for Trump and I didn't vote for Hillary. 
and I know that it's going around out there and I spoke to a couple of people and uh, when upon them learning that I voted for Jill Stein I'm pretty sure some, some Trump voters laughed at me and some Hillary voters were condemning me in their minds one of them verbally this person told me that I was part of the problem like don't blame the corruption of Hillary Clinton with the woman from the DNC Wasserman don't blame the corruption uh, from what I read about of her colluding with media people and keeping Bernie Sanders out there's a lot of people who have pointed out that if Bernie if it was down to Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump that Bernie Sanders probably would have won but Bernie Sanders was no longer in the game I'm pretty sure largely due to the shenanigans that the Hillary campaign had going on during this election. I also know that one person who I deem far more intelligent than I am said that voting for anybody besides Hillary would be throwing your vote away if you're trying to combat the Trump vote. I fully understand. And I know that it doesn't make any sense to vote for anybody else besides the last two people of the major parties. But I just cannot bring myself to buckle to such steering of my opinion, of my choice and leader. What's the point of having any other parties if they're never going to get a shot? That's a good question for me. I'm not saying to eliminate them. I'm just saying it's a good running question. So now that the election is done, there's always something positive to every situation. And regarding this situation, what I and many people have seen all along is that having Trump as a president means that the left will most likely not go to sleep. Whereas if Hillary would have won, everybody would just nod their head yes and allow her to proceed to do basically whatever she wanted. I know that my lefty friends are quite riled up about this. And... I definitely don't feel the same way about this country. I didn't feel great about it, but I definitely don't feel the same way that I felt about the country before election day. Because maybe I had lost sight of it, but really I had no idea that there were so many people in America that would be willing to tolerate and even participate in such xenophobic rhetoric. It's quite astounding. It's like the year 1960 came out of the woodwork. Now, concerning Trump voters, although there will be a variety of answers to this, I have a question on what criteria did Trump voters vote for Trump on? Because I'm not aware of very many of his plans. I'm aware of one plan that he had to get rid of Obamacare and make savings accounts for people in which they would put their own money in for when they got sick, they would use that money. If, if I understand that correctly, Trump doesn't understand that people don't even have money to save. People are living paycheck to paycheck. Like, what are those people supposed to do? I know of people whose lives have been financially ruined because a medical condition came up. And I can't help but think that we could do better than that as the most powerful nation in the world. So Donald Trump said, like every president says during election time, even Obama, although I will miss his demeanor, even he said things during his campaigning that he never saw through. And, so, and in some cases, like concerning whistleblowers and Guantanamo, he did the opposite. But for Trump, now we'll see if he's just like every other politician. And uh, whether they're blocked from doing things or if they're just saying whatever they need to say in order to get elected, we're going to find out how much power a president actually has, depending on how much of what he talked about he can accomplish. This includes the ominous wall between the United States and Mexico, where if I had to bet money on it, it's not going to happen. As a nation, I don't think we should be going in the direction of building walls. Meanwhile, business-wise and communication-wise, we're increasingly globalized. I think that over the next four years, there's going to be a lot of insecurity. 
and that people will be thinking harder about things and paying closer attention to things, which is a good thing. Overall, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a strange time. Okay, I gotta tell you, I can't tell you how pissed off I am right now at the chick that made me move here for her. I mean, I know it was ultimately my decision, but why did she have to move here? Like, I know I fell in love with her and everything, we're in love, but why did she have to move here? I thought she was educated, she went to college, she had her master's degree, I think she was on her way to getting her doctorate. And her brother was a doctor and her brother's wife was a doctor and her sister was something else. They all graduated university. Her dad and her mom graduated university. So, you know what? She couldn't have been as smart as I thought she was or any of them because they moved here. Well, okay, her brother and his uh, his wife, they had a residency here. But wh how can anybody want to move here? Like, if you know, if you're that educated, I wasn't educated. I was ignorant. I was this ignorant Chicano dude. And I thought that, you know, I was like moving up in the world. Also, besides being in love, I thought that I was starting to hang out with people who were more educated than me. And, but who, who in their right minds with that kind of education would move here if they didn't have to? I guess they had to. Florida is, Florida is a messed up state. You know, it is, it, I don't, I seriously, I'm not trying to bash your state. If you love it here, I completely understand. Like, for example, I have uh, sentimental feelings for the West Coast uh, and the way that it looks and all the people and the culture. Of course, I'm, like I mentioned, Chicano. But Florida has got to be the most, I don't, the most backwards of the powerful states. I mean, uh, it's, it's crazy over here. People still, people still drive around here with waving the Confederate flag. As a matter of fact, you know, forget that. And huge contracting companies and people who invest their money actually name places plantation here. Like, they actually still name places. Oh, hey, you know what? It'd be a good idea to name this place Julington Oaks Plantation. And they still do that. They still name places Plantation over here. That's how, like, in your face they are, like, willfully ignorant. <laughs> and everybody accepts it. When I first heard that, uh, that a place was called a plantation, I had to ask the person to repeat themselves. They said, I, I said, where do you live? They said, I live in such and such plantation. I said, excuse me? Because if you said that on the West Coast, if you were like at a business meeting in downtown Los Angeles and you were sitting there looking at a model of the housing uh, development that you're working on, and you said to the person out there in California, I'm thinking about naming it such and such plantation. They would kick you out of that office so fast. They would... Your company would put you on leave and have you checked for <laughs> to ask you to go see somebody in the mental health field. <laughs>